Hey guys, welcome back again to another Zeal Cigar Review. My name is Bradley, this is again JB, and today we are talking about how important ice is to your cigar game. All next on the Zeal Cigar Review. I, I, I can feel the blood creeping up from the heathens. Got will, got fight, got pride, got reason. If they want to go eat, then you know I'm gone. Well, JB, there's no doubt that we live in the hottest city in the entire world. One of the hottest cities. I mean, it's one of the hottest hot. cities. I mean, it's really, definitely really hot. hot. Phoenix is the land of sun. We are always warm here. We do have air conditioning back here in the warehouse, a.k.a. Mod's basement. And we are absolutely loving everything about uh, where we're at here in life and with the cigars and everything else like that. But it does get hot from time to time. And we, like other people, don't use whiskey stones all the time. We got each other's whiskey stones for like Christmas, but... Yeah, Carrie I, got you some. I know. So the, here's the weird thing about whiskey stones. I, I feel, even though, even though I, I, I... A couple things about whiskey stones, just real quick. This is my, 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 my take. I rarely use them. I always go for ice. Okay. Okay. And, and this is because I, these teeth right here are fake. All these teeth. I got knocked out in a basketball game a while back. And uh, what was interesting about that is when I drank the whiskey stones, they would kind of hold on, sliding, and they'd hit my teeth. Oh. And it would hurt, actually. They're, they're stones. They're rock, if you would. And they're cold and everything. I just feel like they, they're they cold. They don't water down your whiskey. Yeah. They don't water down your drinks. But an ice does eventually. Okay? But I like the, the, the taste of ice. Sometimes I like the taste of watered down stuff that's really, really strong. So Hey, some people... Cr Crown Royal with a splash of water, bro. I know a couple people that are, that's the order. All day, all day. So somebody came through for us like they always do. New Air came through with an ice maker, asked us to test it and review it and tell you how it plays in your cigar game because when it's hot outside in Phoenix and you're having a good drink, you want that cold while you're smoking your cigar. So we want you to take a look at this incredible footage of the New Air ice maker. It makes like, what, 45 pounds of ice a, <laughs> a day? day. It's incredible. Takes almost a whole gallon of Oh, water. my goodness, dude. The thing is so amazing. Take a look at this. Real quick, you, you saw right there in the video, it's amazing, it's great, it sets on the countertop. You can actually put this like in an office, pour a gallon of water in as yeah. needed. This thing would come in perfect for like a, a party at your house okay. or things like that, or daily use. You well, know, sincerely. Or somebody like you that doesn't have a refrigerator that has an ice maker in it. I didn't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about my insecurities on camera and you don't need to bring things up like that right now. There's one thing I've always wanted in my entire life of married life that my wife has denied me. Beer dispensing helmet. A what? A beer dispensing helmet. I I, I, I love to tell you I, I've had one of those and I have. I've had a, I've had one have of those. Have you really? Yeah, yeah, dude, it's awesome, it's awesome. Long live the 80s. Uh, anyway, so I've always wanted an ice maker but we've never 
ever got in a refrigerator. Even all the new refrigerators we bought never got a refrigerator with an ice maker. Not once. Is it just because there wasn't like a water line in the house that was like no, We had water lines and everything else like that. It just, my wife didn't want one. Hmm. She's like, we can use cubes and I want something that makes ice for me. So this thing makes ice for me. It's incredible. You can like vary the thickness of the ice. Yeah, it that does was pretty it. cool. Yeah, it does it in like what? Like 12, 15, 13 minutes? 15 minutes on the highest, the thickest setting? Yeah, yeah. And so like you can change the thickness and everything like that. It comes out. The tray comes out. It's got a little nice little ice scoop for you. It's got everything you could ever want. So that is our preferred. That is our preferred method here at Zeal Cigars and me at home for sure of using ice is getting an ice maker. And if you don't have one in your refrigerator, like this blue collar guy, make sure you pick up yours at newair.com. So check out newair.com. I'll link everything below for you, including... Maybe even a discount. Here's the question. Yes. Give me the question. How many ice cubes? It's a lot. Of, 45 pounds? No, no, no. How, 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 well that, yeah, that's how many that thing makes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How so, many ice cubes do you put in your drink? I put a lot. Really? Yeah, I like a lot of ice. Yeah, okay. totally. Yeah, yeah. What about you? If I put any ice, like like a salt, like a light, like an ice cube instead uh -huh. of like the, like you got me the stainless steel whiskey stones. So mm -hmm. those are super dope because they yeah. don't leave any, anything Do they in hit there. your teeth? No. Nah. See? Well, you but don't have fake teeth. I, I, fake, I yeah. also don't like slam it back like a Neanderthal um, or an ogre. I just try to live my life. And people claim I'm an ogre or an Neanderthal or... A gorilla. A gorilla. I mean, this silverback great white has ape. no quit. I mean, the great, great white. I <laughs> keep going. <laughs> but uh, but I, I'm a one cube. You're one one cube. ice cube. I don't like to dilute the drink very much. Um, one, I don't one, mind it. One single ice cube. I don't mind, especially when it's hot outside. I don't mind dilute as long as it's cold. Okay. Yeah, I do like my whiskey cold. I, mean, I, I will drink it at room temperature in the winter, but in the summer, dude, it's got to be warm. Ooh, if it's like a Jack and Coke, though, yeah, I could go. Have, I could go. Gotta with have thick ice. Glass gotta have the ice. Well, hey, this stuff's restaurant quality ice. Make sure you check it out. Pro the, the product details are below, and I think you'll really love it. But some people have said that the new podcast that we have has changed us. And, and dare I say that I've become an ogre? Have you seen me become an ogre? Have you seen me spew? Maybe just twice. Just twice? Have, you, have I been spewing ogreism and toxic masculinity out there for young men to listen to? Because somebody said that. Somebody maybe, said that. Maybe just a couple. Just a couple. Just a couple. Well, today we're going to be talking about some ogre cigars, and we're smoking Asylum 13's Ogre. Look at that thing. Is that that, is that that those beautiful cigar that you've ever seen, the Candela and the Maduro together? We're going to get into these things, but you know what we got to do. We <laughs> name our podcast after it. We got to cut, light, and smoke. This thing Perfect. smells so unique. I know, dude. It's great. The Candela and the... Mm, the Candela and the, uh, the Maduro together, it's going to be an adventure. It's going to be an adventure. So let's talk a little about the podcast. This is what we told, we told people we were going to talk about today. Let me ask you... I guess I have three questions about the podcast for you. Just three. One, what have you liked so far about the podcast? Mm. What's been the most challenging thing about the podcast? Mm. Okay. And then how, how do you feel the podcast is changing you? And I'll answer the same questions. Ooh, that's tough, dude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to light this first. We got to light it. We got to light it. Dude, just from the rip, this thing is so good. Yeah? I mean, something about, like, this... Candela experience. Now, if you see, it's got more Candela just at the very beginning. It's got an extra little wrapper yeah, like at the a very yeah. Foot wrap. And that Candela is very sweet, very like I don't know what the word is. It's like a, a smooth like grass, smooth creamy grass. I don't know some mm. smooth bluegrass. Oh, dude. And I just I can't get over the fact that. How cigar? How, how good this cigar actually is. This is Silent 13. I love it. It's a big cigar. It's my ring gauge, the 660. I like that ring gauge. I'm in. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this one. I know, dude. It's got some sweetness to it that I really do enjoy. It really does. I like the sweetness. I mean, it just on the retro hail that that sweet. I, I imagine it's like a sweet that sweet grassy mm -hmm. that sweet grassy note, if you would. But it's not heavy on the grass note. No. It's a very light. I think it's tamed by the Maduro. It's it's, yeah. it's tamed very well. It's got that like cocoa, a little bit of grass, but it's tamed very well and balanced very very well. It's like you just walked past the hay wagon versus standing in a hay barn. You know, you just kind of walk by and you get the light walk, the light loft but you have, of the hay. But you have something in there that's like, how do you say it? It's, it's like a. I, I'm I'm just gonna ask you this: Have you had an asylum cigar that you didn't like? 
No, I haven't either. I haven't either. I mean, all of them are very, very good. But this one in particular, the Ogre, I mean, it put them on the map for the big cigars. This thing comes in at 880, doesn't it? It's a big boy cigar. It really is. So if your life is coming to fruition in ways that make you really, really proud, mm. then you might want to celebrate with this cigar if you're a big boy like me because this thing will put you, it'll put you in your seat for probably about 45, 50 minutes, you know, if not an hour and a half. It's great flavor on this at the beginning. Mm. I don't know if that's just the extra foot, like you were saying, or if it's just... But such a good balance. It's a really balanced smoke. It really is. It's very good. It's burning. Pretty- I don't know why that's mine's my burning, theme mine burn, Mine's burning kind of weird, and I'm telling you why, because I'm smoking it fast. Well, and we also lit it with a single torch, we which did. sometimes the 660s. It's always, it's always a crapshoot when you do that. It is a crapshoot when you do that. But, it's, I mean, the, the construction of this is perfect. I mean, you don't you don't see, like, leaves coming off anywhere or anything like no. that. It really is perfect. I mean, just... You- so let me ask you this. At home, what's your favorite Asylum cigar? And have you had the Ogre? Tell me what your thoughts are on the Ogre. It doesn't need to be Halloween for you to have an Ogre. Nah. You should have this any time of year. It's very, very good. And I like how they call it the Ogre because it does have that, like, you know, yeah. that creepy vibe to it. I like that, you know, that, Asylum has that thing, you know, the, you, the creepy vibe. You know like what it vibe. doesn't rec- like resemble from an Ogre, though? What? It's not stinky. It's not mm-hmm. off putting. It's not scary. It's just freaking good. It's a medium. It's a medium-bodied cigar. It's not super full-bodied. I say the pepper's probably at a five, maybe a six, uh, as I get into it. But it's a very good cigar. A very good cigar. Mm. It's a. It's this is one of the ones that's ten times more pleasant on the retro hill. It's very pleasant on the retro hill. Some some chocolatey caramel with that grass on the retro hill like makes it incredibly. Oh, yeah, yeah. You nailed it, dude. Absolute molasses-y, caramely, chocolatey, grassy. Retro hill. Yeah, in the retro, you get that, like, you get a slight hint of the grassiness. Very, this is one of the, in my personal opinion, this is one of the least grassiest candelas that you can smoke. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you don't like the grassy stuff and you're trying to figure out what to, you know, what, what to do, it's like got a hint of grass but not overwhelming with the grass. You yeah. want to try this. You have to try this. And if you've never had a bar- barber pole before, you definitely want to try it. I love barber poles. Oh, it's one of the first cigars I started smoking regularly was a barber pole. Mm-hmm. And, oh, man, I just, I'm a sucker for a good-looking barber pole. I just am. I think I told and this you is, that. This is quite different time. than our Irish Hulk. It's very different. It's very quick. Our Irish Hulk's a little lighter. It's got a little creamy. It's more car- Dominican tobacco. Yeah, the most definitely, most definitely. Uh, more creamy, But more I like nutty. this. And it's got another, can- it's got another uh, it's a cam- wrapper. It's Cameroon a triple, Maduro. it's a triple wrapper. Yeah, triple wrapper, yeah. yeah. So Cameroon uh, Maduro and a, uh, it's a Cameroon Maduro. Cameroon Maduro, Candela, and Connecticut. Connecticut, yeah. And this is a, a Maduro and a Connecticut. I'm going to say or this right now. Or Maduro and a Candela, yeah. I will smoke this nine out of ten times over uh, the Filthy Hooligan. I got to go back and sm- smoke the f- Filthy Hooligan. But this is, Personal, this is... For me personally. I'll say this is this is lighter than the Filthy Hooligan. I have Filthy Hooligans on a different level as far as strength is concerned. Okay. Yeah, that's what I would say. That's what I would say. All right, so let's get into it, dude. Let's get let's just, let's just go for it, dude. What's something about the podcast that we just started that you really enjoy? I'll go to my favorite thing too. I think it's just being able to actually like have the conversations that we've always wanted to have but felt like we couldn't have openly, especially on some other platforms. Right. Um, okay. And I think I honestly think both of us are here for bigger reasons than selling people cigars. Like that's what we do. That's our means right now f- to make money. But I think ultimately like we're here for bigger reasons and our, the podcast is allowing us to do that and to reach people in ways that we're meant to reach people. Like you were a pastor for 20 freaking years, bro. Like you may not be a pastor right now, but you're on this planet to help people become better versions of themselves. I've personally experienced that. I've personally seen it in other people that have been here and I 100% believe that's the reason we're doing this podcast. I don't. I, I don't know what to say. I think, I think I killed I just, it, dude. That was. There's so much more to this dude than you will ever see here on video. You just. I mean, I could not have crafted a better guy to do the podcast with. I could not have crafted. Uh, and it's and, and what we do here is not nearly as in depth to what we do there. And what you said, dude, it just I mean, that's real, bro. That's I mean, it's so important that you 
that you hear the depth of what he just said. I mean, if you care anything about what we do here on cigars, then um, I would definitely go to the Cut, Light, and Smoke podcast. And you can find it anywhere it's streaming. Just say to Alexa, Cut, Light, and Smoke podcast, and she'll pull it up. Um, she might have even just heard she you might, yeah. start playing it. <laughs> she plays the background. Um, the, yeah, that's... I, I'll speak to that. I think... Um, you're right. We, we were meant for more than just selling cigars. That's our means, and I love that. Don't get me wrong. I love what cigars do. I love what cigars are. But having those conversations, the conversations that most guys need to have and need to be in, in the topics and the things and the themes that we talk about in the podcast, I think are very, very important. And uh, I don't think many guys talk, to them, talk about them enough uh, in a way that is uh, – let me just say this. I, I think the thing that we do – on the podcast is give transferable concepts, meaning mm. a lot of guys talk about stuff, but we don't talk about what's the solution for this. What's the solution? And we try to get to the solution, not just talk about issues. Yeah, you know, um, I think that's an important thing. So that's that's one thing. Um, I think my my favorite thing is uh, probably working with you and seeing the depth of who you are come out over there. Mm. I mean, so just just so you know, we, we sit here in this studio and the podcast we're looking at, it's right across there. And one of the questions that we have, are you going to bring video to the podcast? Mm. We absolutely are going to bring video to the podcast. We have a quarter of the studio built. We got to build up more of the studio and everything else like that. Uh, and it'll be great. It will be it'll be awesome. But uh, and I'm not sure how if that's going to be clipped or things like that, because the podcasts are rather long. They're 45 minutes to an hour, you know, and talking about things that relate to guys. You know, we talk about uncensored discussion about uh, masculinity, cigars, and culture. And you know, we really I, do. I would even throw a, a fourth one in there that we kind of left out, and it's, you know, uh, even like spirituality, religion. We do, man. We get into it a lot. I can't, so. you can't, def- I mean, here's the thing about being a, a Christian and, and, and the way that I'm, that my faith has changed my life. I can't divorce that from who I am. Mm. And so I'm not going to try to pretend to be somebody I'm not. And I'm definitely not going to not answer questions when somebody asks something that has a spiritual angle to it. And so I've seen other guys say, I'm not here for that. That's not what I talk about. I'm not afraid to do that. I'm not afraid to talk about that. Um, I think one of the things that somebody asked, are you ever going to debate somebody with you on the podcast as an opposite viewpoint? I said, I think I do that all the time. Not that just as opposite viewpoints, but I think I counterpoint what we're talking about a lot. You know, what about this and play devil's advocate and what have you. So my favorite thing is working with you and seeing how you, how deep the well to Justin's, you know, life really goes. It's pretty deep, dude. It really is deep. It's pretty exciting. And that, and that, like that chemistry we've talked about all these years, it's coming to fruition over there and on here and other things like that. And I think it's you great. You said all these years, it's been like a year and a half, if that's true. anything. Yeah, it's been about two. It's true. All these years, all year, you know. I think a lot of people will, will will ask, you know, are we melding together as a team? I would say 100%. 100%. Yeah, 100%. And it takes time to do that. Remember, I think every relationship takes three things. I talk about it all the time, especially on the podcast. I thought every every relationship means time, trust, and truth. You see time with somebody. That's the first thing you need. The second thing you need is you need trust. You need to build that trust. You need to come through for them and everything like that. And the third thing is you need to be able to tell them hard truths, you know, about things. Like Copyright that. in that podcast I'm name tell- right now. I know, right now. <laughs> It's just really interesting. So now what's been one challenge for the podcast for you? Uh, I think um, one is just like we we don't we don't schedule anything. We don't script anything. We if don't. anything, there might be bullet points of questions that we want to ask mm-hmm. or something like that. But right. um, or if we research something and we need some data points on the research, mm-hmm. uh, data uh, percentages, things like that. Mm-hmm. But I think for me, it's just being able to, man, one, there's not enough time. For some of these things but it's like yeah, it's like it's, it could be three hours it really could yeah being able to find out how yeah like give the most information and 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 be able to talk on that topic uh properly with the, the right information mm-hmm. and to make it interesting like to 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 figure out what those avenues are those side streets that people don't want to go down mm-hmm. my job is to find them Mm. and find out how to bring those side streets into the conversation so that they can be talked about because ev- otherwise people just drive and walk right past those side streets. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and you do that you do that very well on the podcast. You come back to something, you're like, I want I want you to unpack something you said or something yeah. like that. I think that's, that's brilliant. It really is. 
one of the biggest challenges for me, I'll just tell you this at the very beginning, was our equipment. Yeah, and, audio. And, and we don't, none of, neither of us are audio engineers, and we don't know a whole lot about audio technology or anything else like that. We know enough to be dangerous. Uh, we had somebody else, a dear friend of ours, uh, help us set up this studio. And uh, so the more we got into the podcast, I think our first five or six episodes were on old equipment mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. So if you go back to the very first episodes and listen to them now, uh, everything's pro set up now. Everything's pro set up. Huge shout out to musician friend uh, that set us up with this. And we, they didn't give it to us. I mean, we, right. we paid for it, just so you know. <laughs> we made a significant investment in that podcast equipment. Uh, and I think, it, I think it's paid off. I think it sounds very, well, yeah, very I mean, good. Today's uh, <clears throat> podcast that just went up, mm-hmm. uh, we were able to actually have a, somebody call in. Right, right. Who, that was who really wrote us great. an amazing email. Oh, yeah. That was really, really good. So to have people on via phone or via Skype or via FaceTime or anything like that, that's very, very good for us. And they Bluetooth right into the board. It's really, really good. And we're not shy about the equipment that we have, by the way, or not telling you. We, don't want we got the, the Road Podcaster board. Yeah. We got AKG mics, and we have Sennheiser. Or no, I don't know if Sennheiser. I don't know what the heck the headphones are. The headphones are. are really good. Everything's really good. I just know that. Everything is real pro. These guys upgraded us very, very well from, you know, a, a, <clears throat> I, I want to say it's like from $1,000 to a $2,000 setup. You know, so it's it's been pretty pretty amazing. That's been my most challenging thing, to, to learn video, that. Yeah. You get to learn that, to learn how to do everything Combine else. the audio. And the right. Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really difficult. So... Uh, I'm looking forward to the challenges ahead with that and everything else. So how has the podcast changed you, you believe? Mm, I think for me it relates to, to what I said uh, at, at first, and that's just solidifying that solidifying me that I was correct in the way that my, my path in life is to lead people mm-hmm. and to be there for people. It yep. always has been. Yep. I've always been that shoulder to lean on. I've always taken my own stuff and piled it on. Like we talked about with Nick on the podcast today, Mm -hmm. I've always been somebody that's been willing to take on their jugs of water. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think, I think for me, it's just, it's just re it's, it's reassuring myself that, um, that that's, that's why I'm on this planet, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You impact people. I, I, I wish, I wish I could show you as much as I see of the hard work that he does and the person that he is for other people. I mean, a lot of people depend on him. Yeah, you, know, you don't. You don't know the half of it yet. <laughs> this is this. Is, I'm just one of many. Trust me, I'm just one of many. So, uh, I'd say the way that it changed me. I, I got to go back to family on this one, man. I so something happened. I had my son on the podcast and I interviewed Camden, and he's going through a hard time prior to that, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a very hard time. It was a it was a brutal time as a dad. Brutal time as a dad. When you see your son making horrible mistakes and failing at, at certain things. And he's old enough to know. That's very, very difficult as a dad. And uh, I, we had a really long talk about something, and I said, I, I want you to change. I gave him a path to follow, and uh, he started to do so very, very, this was about three weeks ago, started to change things dramatically in his life. And uh, I'll tell you something that has absolutely blown my mind. So after the... After the the podcast that he was on, because he was on one of the podcasts, I can't remember what episode it was. Twelve was it? Twelve? I think it's twelve B. Twelve B is the podcast. Um, so, a friend of his, a, a, a girl at, at the place that he worked, listens to our podcast. I had no idea, and and he walked in after being on our podcast, going to work, and said, "Hey, I heard you on your dad's podcast today," and I was like, "Oh my gosh, there's a twenty something year old lady's listening to our podcast." You know, and I was like, that's, that's crazy. So like when I, when he told me that he was like, and and then his other conversations he's had, he's like, dad, that's, I mean, he, he, he said being on the podcast was one of his favorite things he's done in a long time Hmm. and he really enjoyed it. And I never thought my son would be with me in something like that. He's just a different cat than I am. And you're the embarrassing dad that's got a, that's on TikTok, you know, like my dad's on TikTok. But uh, it was such a bonding thing, and the amount of respect and absolute pride that I have in my son is, has grown so tremendously. And I love my daughters. You know Savannah. You know, you've seen Madeline here. As well, my daughters are great, but you want that connection with your boy. You want that connection with your son, and to have that with felt so good. Respects, I mean, just respects the hell out of JB. I mean, uh, we, he calls him Uncle JB. 
I mean, like, I call him Uncle J. Uncle JB says hi. Uncle JB says happy birthday. I mean, like, it's a, it's a crazy thing. Your uncle, like, 30-something. You know, so, I mean, like, that's a that's a crazy thing. I mean, I want you to, I want you to honestly say, God, I'm going to get all choked up about this, dude. Just be real about it. We had Just no get, idea where well, this was going to go. Yeah, we didn't, it, like most videos. Um, tell me if something didn't happen to Camden, and I had to go help him, you wouldn't be right next to me doing the same thing oh no brainer you actually he actually texted me a joke and i forget i forget exactly what you said but you had said something of you had sent a very specific message of wording and my immediate response was like what do we got to do yeah you were like no dude i was just watching the movie <laughs> and i was like dang dude i was getting on my bike yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean there's there's uh <laughs> there there's a ton of love and respect here there's a ton of tremendous amount of uh so to see how that's changed my family dynamics in ways I never thought would. So it's it's just incredible to see that happen. And so uh, in a very good way, in a very, very good way. So I'm, I'm going to get back to the cigar real quick. And I'm just going to tell you, we'll, we'll finish the video here. I know we got cheesy for you, but we wanted to tell you that. And we wanted to, and by the way, how is the cigar? It just gets better. It does. It really does. It's smoother. It's creamier. It's the molasses has like evened out to almost like a vanilla cream mm -hmm. molasses. Uh, it's Almost got like a, a cool whip. Yeah, yeah. It's got like a creamy. The grass is more creamy and like almost hay-like in your nasal cavity. It's almost like you dropped a milk chocolate bar into some grass clippings and still ate it. Dude, that's very, very accurate. <laughs> that's fair. That might be the most accurate thing you've ever said about a cigar. That's really good. Yeah, <laughs> that's very good. Well, have you guys had the ogre? Have you had it yet? If you haven't had it, go get it. Because it's so good. It really is amazing. And so we got to get back to podcasting and doing orders and everything else like that. So with that said, guys, we're out of here like last year. Thanks for joining us. Again, catch us on the podcast, and we'll catch you later on. Peace.